Hello guys, this is Marco Schwartz here and welcome to this video. Inside this video, I will show you how to use iREST on the ESP32. So what we'll do is see how to um, install the ESP32 definitions on your Arduino IDE and then how to use iREST to completely control your ESP32 boards using iREST. So we'll see the case of like a local Control in this video, I will do more videos later about uh, the cloud control of iREST. Now we'll actually just see how to control uh, like a simple LED on the ESP32. So an LED connected to this chip and we'll see how to control it remotely using iREST. So let's first see what we need for the project. So I will have, of course, an ESP32 board. So this is basically the board called like the core board given by the manufacturer of the ESP32. So that's the one I will be using, but of course you can use any other uh, ESP32 boards uh, for this project. For uh, to have actually something to test, I will have like just uh, a resistor and an LED. I will take a breadboard to present all of that and I will just have two jumper wires here. So what I will do now is simply take my breadboard, place it in the middle like this, and now I will come and place my ESP chip on the breadboard, just like this. Um, I need to be careful because I need to have those pins here uh, still available, so that's okay in this case. Let me just zoom a little bit more on this. Now I will come with the resistor, place it somewhere, for example here. I will now get the longest pin of the LED and just place it like this on the breadboard. Finally, I will take this table. I will go from um, the ground pin, which is this pin here. I will go to the other pin of this LED, maybe over there, like this. And with this one, uh, this one here, I will go from pin number four, which is this pin right here. And with this, I will go to the resistor here. And here, my project is fully assembled and I'm ready to test iREST right on this uh, ESP32 chip here. So let's now see how to actually run iREST on the ESP32. So first, you will need to, of course, get the Arduino IDE. So please do that if it's not installed yet. And then you will need to install the ESP32 board definitions. And there is not yet, at least, at the time that this video was recorded, an automated way to do that. But please just go to this page, so the Arduino ESP32 page from the manufacturer, and just follow the instructions that they have here. Okay, I could not do a better job than they did. Uh, so it depends on if you are on Windows, if you are on Mac, or if you have on Linux. So there is some instructions that are uh, specific to those platforms. So just, you know, for the, for the match, you just need to copy that, paste it wherever, you know, in the terminal, and it will be installed. And then you just need to actually restart the Arduino IDE, as I said. So it's very easy. So now let me close that, and I will open uh, the reference sketch for the ESP32. So to actually get that, okay, it's very easy. Just go to um, include library, manage libraries, and in case it's not installed yet, just look for iREST, okay? So that's the library iREST uh, from version 2.5.0, okay? And of course, later versions, it supports the, the ESP32. Uh, so if you have a version superior than that, uh, it will work just right. And then you can just go into file examples. Um, where is iREST? iREST and ESP32 uh, normal, right? So here I just copied that in another file. The only thing that you will have to change is this, uh, is your Wi-Fi, SSID, and password. The rest is basically, um, you don't have to change it. So note that here there are two variables already defined, like temperature and humidity. We'll use those to just to test, you know, just to test if we can actually read data from the board. But of course you can link modify the sketch and link to that later to like measurements from a real sensor. So now I'll show you how to use it. So we'll just go into tools, board, and then we want to select like the ESP32 board that you have. So here I have the ESP32 dev module. 
that been done. I will go to uh, this. I need to make sure that I have the right sale port here. That's the case now. And now I'm actually ready to upload the code to my board. So now I will upload that to the board. So it's first compile the sketch for the ESP32. And now it's actually uploading uh, to the board. So as you can see, if you you know if you worked with the ESP uh, 8266s before, this is very fast compared to the to the ES, to the other ESP chip. So that's definitely one advantage of the ESP32. So now, what I will do is uh, reset my board. So first, I will open the Cyan monitor. And what I will do now, you see there are some strange characters. You actually need to reset the board, so I will do that right now. Yep, so as you can see here, there are those messages that you might have. Uh, that actually said failed, but it actually works, don't worry. And then we can see that the Wi-Fi was connected. We started the server, and this is the IP address of our board, and that's very important because we'll need that to uh, access the board remotely. So we'll just copy that, and now what we'll do is actually go to a web browser again, and I will just type the um, IP address of the board, and I, now I just want to see if it's responding to commands, right? So I will just type. Uh, this followed by ID, and this will just send the request to the board just to make sure that it actually received the command and that IRS is actually running on it. So as you can see, it now answered with uh, this message in JSON format. It's just saying what the board is, right? So that can be defined inside the code, the hardware, it's an ESP32, and it is connected to the Wi-Fi network. So as you can see here, the answer from the board was really slow. And this is due to uh, you know the fact that the ESP32, when I tried this video, uh, you know, the, the drivers are really like in beta version, and especially the web server that we use here is uh, in a very early version. So of course, if you are watching this in the future, this will definitely improve. And I'm also working on my side to improve iRest and to make it worse. Uh, work with the ESP32. So now let's try to light up this LED. So what I will do is simply type mode 4 O, which will turn pin number 4 as an output, because we need that first before actually controlling the LED. And as you can see, I got the message that it has indeed set, been sent to an output. And now I can actually type digital 4 and 1 and this should turn on the LED. As you can see, immediately the LED uh, has turned on. And now I will turn it off again by putting a zero at the end, uh, and again, immediately the LED is now off. Let's do it again. One and zero. So you can see that it's really, really fast now. Um, let's try some uh, more things before we end this video. Uh, if I just type temperature, then I will immediately get the value of the temperature from the board. And of course, you can link that to a real sensor, as I said earlier, and have some real measurements coming in uh, over there. I will now type humidity to get the other one. So as you can see, now I get the value of humidity. And you know, basically all the RS commands, except the analog uh, commands, because they are not yet implemented uh, when this video was made. So most of the ARS commands are working on the ESP32 chip. And as you can see, compared to the ESP8266, it's much faster to uh, program, right? So you can experiment much faster. Uh, there are still some glitches in the server part, as we saw before. Uh, there was some quite long reaction time for the chip uh, at the first command. But once the first command is sent, uh, you know, it's like, it's like very reactive. I will try the LED again. It's really reactive. Like I haven't made measurements, but 
it seems at least much faster than the ESP8266. So that was a rest on the ESP32. So I will definitely come with more videos about that in the future, especially as uh, the drivers, you know, the, the libraries for this chip improve over time. And also, of course, I will come up with many videos showing you how to use the cloud access uh, of IREST to control your ESP32 projects. That being said, thanks again for watching this video. Don't hesitate to put comments below and I will see you in the next one.